Welcome to the good old fashioned Masonic podcast where we talk all things Masonic while drinking an old fashioned. Here I'm Brian. Here. And I'm Russ. And I'm Patrick Carr. All right. So we are starting this a little different because um, on previous podcasts we've already had Patrick on, so we don't have to have this build up. He is actually going to be a co host with us on this podcast because our focus is the York Right. Russ knows Squadoosh about squadoosh. the York right. I know Squadoosh plus one because I joined and never been back in after that. So, but which Squadoosh is better or worse? Plus one, you know, it, you, you put whatever number yeah. you want plus one. That's it's it's that much better. Now, if it's a scale of one to ten, it's simply ten percent better. I'm going to say it's one to one million. So it's squadoosh plus yeah. one. So we need to fix our squadooshes. We so do. Here we, we do. are. So talk to us about. Let me tell you what I think I know. The York Rite. You have to be a master mason first. In 2000, before you could become a Shriner, you had to go from the Blue Lodge to either the York Rite or the Scottish Rite to be a Shriner. Am I correct so far? Correct. You had to be in a 32nd case. degree. And that was that was nationwide. Oh, you was it? You had okay, to be okay. a 32nd degree in the Scottish Rite or you had to be a Knight Templar. Of the York Rite. Of the York Before Rite. you could go to... Before the... you could become a Shriner. Okay. Here's the next thing I think that I know. Mm-hmm. I was under the impression... Well... I don't know what I'm about to step into, so I'm going to back up. So now... We should drink before you... Yeah, 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 we should drink I before you... I about walked into something. Man, I don't I don't need any more Masonic charges on me. I'm going to sit and just watch Brian work today. <laughs> Woo, you, you just saw that just get all over the place. Okay, so my question is this. I'm a Master Mason. I petitioned to go to the York Rite. I'm sure there's an investigation, get investigated process for all that. We know that. Now I come in, where do I start? Are, there's like several layers of things, right? So walk me through from beginning to end, where do I start? So I'm coming in on a Saturday to get what set of degrees? Okay, the York Rider, the American Rider Freemasonry, is composed of three separate distinct bodies. The Chapter of Royal Archmasons, the Council of Royal and Select Masters, or what we call Cryptic Masonry, and the orders of the Knights Templar. Notice that we went from degrees to orders. I'll okay. explain a little bit more later, but they are a little different. Okay. Um, the chapter of Royal Archmasons, we are, we are connected to the Grand Chapter of Kansas. Uh, they call that Capitular Masonry. Um, but they're also connected by, very closely aligned, with the General Grand Chapter of Royal Archmasons International. Great organization. They're kind of like the father of all of the of the, the chapter degrees, so to speak, Capitular Masonry. Capitular Masonry is made up of four different degrees. Now, why would you want to take, why would you want to join the York Rite? Because we know there's a lost word of the Master Mason. We know that. We do. Okay. We don't know why it's lost. Well, we do. We kind of do. Well, not before we're in the York Rite. But not before we join the York Rite. I apologize. Yes. You're right. Also, the other reason is, up until the early 1800s and the advent of the third degree of, or, of, or the Master Mason's degree, basically you weren't a Master Mason or, or really considered that till you either passed the chair or till you took the Holy Royal Arch. The Holy Royal Arch is the final degree in Capitular Masonry or in the chapter. And that is what was held by the Blue Lodges for many, many years. Get to late 17, early 1800s, next thing you see is the the Master Mason's degree, or some version of it as we know it, and the Holy Royal Arch is kind of like not as important anymore. But it's still important because it tells you the story. Everything that you see in the chapter builds upon what you know in your Masonic Blue Lodge experience. The Holy Royal Arch is the summation and completion of your Blue Lodge experience. That's why every Mason should be interested in at least the Capitular degrees. To join the whole, to get the degree of Holy Royal Arch. So, are there um, Masons that do that first section and then never go on? There are some. Okay. But then you get the the um, the cryptic degrees or the Council of Royal and Select Masters, mm-hmm. and that's a little different because that teaches you how that word was saved. You'll get the the real lost word of Master Mason in the chapter, but the Council, you know, then you get that question will. Well, I've got it. Yes, I've completed my Master Mason's degree. I now know. Well, but how was it hidden so they could be brought back to light? 
Mm-hmm. Cryptic masonry explains that to you. That's the purple coats. You know, you hear us talk a lot about the red coats, the purple coats, and the black coats, or the black uniforms. The red coats are the chapter. Where That's, does a guy buy? If a guy wanted to buy those yeah. purple jackets. Where does the guy buy those purple jackets? I go to blazerdepot.com and buy them. They're like 90 bucks, and they ship them. Yeah, that's who I use, guys. That's a, that's a shameless plug for blazerdepot.com. If, if you ever need a purple blazer or an orange blazer. Or a red blazer. You can go to blazerdepot.com. They are our new unofficial sponsor. They are. <laughs> Poor guys. They, they are, whether they like those, it or not. Those coats are Pim Daddy. That, 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 those are. Those yeah, are. Yeah. I, I, there's a certain color of red. There's a certain color of, uh, for the chapter. There's a, the purple for the council. Now, once you finish your council, um, then you have the the orders of the Knights Templar. This is where it gets different. Okay. Any master mason can be a chapter or council mason. Okay. Any master mason. When you get to the orders of the temple, it's a Christian body. Mm-hmm. It's You have to be willing to say, okay. I will defend the Christian religion over any other religion. Okay. In Kansas, you pretty much have to be a Christian to do it. That's just the reality. Because there's not many people of another faith who's going to say, I'm going to stand up if we ever get in a holy war. What are the chances of us getting in a holy war as Masons? Right. When we say we don't want to deal in those issues anyway. Right, right. right. Um, so you said in Kansas. So in other states, how is it potentially uh, There is different? still some, some flex okay. where somebody okay. will say, yes, I'm willing to defend that. Okay. And that's okay. That's what they, that's what they do. One it's of still the, difficult. One of the things that I remember, because I wasn't a past master yet before I went into the York Rite, but I had to be a past master to do something. The pa- In order to get the Holy Royal Arch, you typically had to be a past master of your lodge. Okay. What we do in the York Rite, we have something called the virtual or the honorary past masters. Right. It depends on your jurisdiction. Right. And they go through, and that degree teaches you some information about why it's important to be a past master, what you should know Mm -hmm. as a past master of your lodge. So in America, we confer that past master's degree as an honorary or a virtual past master. It doesn't give you any title. You're not. You can't say you're worshipful. It's enough to move forward in the process. But we allow that to move forward because what I believe probably happened is in the 1700s or or the 1800s, they reached a point in the mid-1800s where it's probably like, hmm. We don't have enough past masters. So we got people that are not going to get to join the, the American or the York Rite and attain that that okay. rank and title of completing it as right. a... Right. You're not going to get there. Yeah. So this is the same reason that the Scottish Rite... What's well, the same reason the Scottish Rite operates on the Lodge Perfection right. and not on the on, and not all the way on the Consistory. Right. Albert right. Pike was brilliant. You operated down here because, think about it, you got your fourth degree. When are you going to get your 32nd? They did them one at a time. Yeah. I mean, it may be 10 years before you get a chance to not only see it, but actually get it. Right. So then we can't operate, which means you can't grow. So you right. operate from you operate down. Well, it was, it was actually, let's, let's subscribe to that philosophy. Mm-hmm. It was actually genius because so many times businesses, forget fraternities, we become a victim of our own rules. Yes. And we're just yes. not like, wait a minute, how important? Can we... We need to think about this. If we want to scale, we need to be able to be a little more fluid. And I think masonry as a whole, we we have lacked the fluidity over the last maybe 100 years uh, to maybe evolve with the times. Just a general statement. You know, I, I mean, I, go, I just go to the electronic cipher. That thing, we should have had that 10 years ago. If ten years ago we couldn't, we wouldn't have the technology to read it right. Well, <laughs> well ten years ago, yes, twenty. No, I could have no. got my BlackBerry World Edition out, my oh, scrolling ball, and just yes. do that. But uh, no, I think that's an interesting point. So I think I subscribe to that philosophy. They made some changes because they felt like, hey, if we don't have this, we're at a standstill. We could die. Okay. Uh, in Europe, they still have lodges of the Holy Royal Arch. They still have those lodges that. Just do those degrees. So in the state of Kansas today, what does York Rite Masonry look like? So, York Rite, A typical York Rite Mason's journey was they'll petition a, a, a chapter. Mm-hmm. When you petition the chapter, you also petition the council and the commandery. They're all in one. And what you'll do is they'll be the petition will be presented just like in Blue Lodge. Mm-hmm. be accepted, voted on, investigated. A lot of times, I know you. So your committee already knows you. They're not going to 
do the type of investigation that we would get in the Blue Lodge. It's yeah. going to be, I know Russ. Right. We all know Russ. Does everybody know Russ? Yeah. What was the committee? Committee, would you like to walk out back and talk about it? Yeah. It's, it's a little quicker. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you hold it over a meeting, but it doesn't take as long. If they're a controversial If figure. there could be, and if they go, yeah, he doesn't really want to, things like yeah. that. But generally, you don't know that. Yeah. So they'll vote. And then we either do it at my chapter in Salina. We still do our degrees ourselves. Several in Kansas do. But we also have a field day usually or, right. a, or a, a reunion kind of thing. So how many chapters are in Kansas? Oh. I should know that, shouldn't I? Because I'm a we said <laughs> I'm a district We, we said we wouldn't put them on the spot. We, Russ just did them dirty. I did. I'm I, a, I didn't even mean to. Russ did them dirty. I I'm a district deputy to. grand high priest for my area, and I have three chapters in my area. Okay. Um, I think More we than have, one, less than I think we have... 28 or 30 chapters okay. across Kansas. I didn't know. That's more and than the same I number of councils yeah. and the same number of commanderies okay. Okay. Uh, of Knights Templar. But what you'll do is you'll receive these degrees One, if we do a, a field day. We'll generally schedule it in January. We'll start scheduling those out. And you'll be able to come and a degree team of chapter masons from across the state will confer the first four degrees. Then you get invited back for the council degrees, which there are three, but we only conferred two in Kansas. The third one's more of an honorary. It takes about 35 people to do it. Okay. And we take part in it every other year okay. um, in a gathering of states to do it. Understood. Um, okay. And we have a degree team in Kansas that works together to do that. But then you'll come back that day and you'll get the two degrees there. That's a half day. So by lunch, you're ready to go. Right. And then we have the Orders of the Temple, which is three separate orders, um, the Order of Malta, um, the Order of the Red Cross, the Lustrous Order of the Red Cross, and then the Orders of the Temple, which are of Christian knighthood. And they take eh, five or six hours to do all three. But you leave the day knighted, and usually the Grand Commander comes, and the Grand Commander will knight you, or a brother that you're really close with. It just all depends. And by the, you leave the day as a, as a Knight's Templar. And you have, your, you have your own mark. When you join the chapter, you select your own mark. Uh, the interesting thing is I selected my mark in 2007 when I, excuse me, 2000, yeah, it was 2007 when I joined in March. And my mark is the sword of justice holding up the scales of justice. My mark? Which... I was not a cop. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So there's but, some, but yeah, that's, that's kind of interesting. That is. Is that I was still interested in, in making sure the scales were balanced. Masonically and in the world about justice. What's doing what's right. I definitely want to hear your mark. Yeah, my mark, mark is on, well, it's not as sexy as that. My mark is on my desk. It's on when I send out, I might do five thank you cards for my employees a year, maybe, because I just mm -hmm. don't give those out. That's just not me. I mean, if I just don't give out thank yous. I mean, thank you, but to give a handwritten thing, that's special to me. He doesn't do it five yes. years in advance. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh. 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 Now he's fired a shot. That's funny. Yeah, that's funny to those two. I love so, too. My, my mark, my mark is simple. It's, it's a forward. It's a for, yeah. Enjoy, boys. Yes. It's a forward B and a backward B, but it's on my office station. Oh, that's cool. Um, that's what. But nobody, nobody knows what it is, and they say, "Oh, it's just my initials." So, but I. So it's a forward B and a backward B, and it's. I'll, I'll show you. It's on some stationery, um, but that's just. He that brings his cattle that way. You too. know what it reminds me of is the, the Rush Limbaugh when he did the excellence in broadcasting. He had a backwards B, an I, and a forward B. Okay. The EIB. Mm -hmm. right. So you've yeah. reversed. Yeah. That's really cool. Not 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 why. So I'd like to see that. I, I'm about to upset some Scottish right guys, and, and some York right guys from me. This is what we were been looking for. Russ and I were talking about before you came on. Here's how I describe, there's a lot of descriptions of the York Rite and the Scottish. Here's how I describe the difference from the Scottish Rite and the York Rite. Personally, I believe that the content in the York Rite smokes the Scottish Rite. However, I believe the pageantry in the Scottish Rite smokes the York Rite. If they could find Somewhere together, that's my opinion, because some of the stuff that I picked up in New York, right, with the lost word and just some other things that you do together, I just thought that was so fascinating from my point of view. Um, and I was an active participant in degree work at the Scottish Rite, and mm -hmm. I just felt, for me, what triggered me, the content in New York, right, I thought was so much better. It's different. Yeah. The York Rite still feels like Blue Lodge until you get to the commandery. Yeah. And then it just 
it doesn't feel like anything you've ever seen, right? right I mean, granted, right, 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 it changes. Right, it's, right. it's very military. It's very orderly. Yeah. Capes and robes, and but it doesn't Maybe feel like it doesn't feel like yeah. Blue Lodge. Yeah. Now, the Scottish Rite is a University of Freemasonry, and if you want to deal in education, the Scottish Rite's philosophy. It's philosophy 101. Mm -hmm. It is. And 201 and 301 and maybe even 401 yeah, it's, it's as you PhD delve into it. Yeah. It's good stuff. And Guthrie does something called the College of the Consistory. Are you familiar with that? Not. Talk to us. Guthrie, it, it, Bob Davis was one of the mm -hmm. was one of the guys when he was, I think, general secretary for, for Guthrie under our and, and Joe Manning, who is their SGIG, their sovereign grand inspector yes. general of Oklahoma. And they developed this concept to where what they do is you apply to be in. And they make you an honorary member of the Guthrie bodies. What yeah. does that mean? You're an honorary member. It means they can give you cool jewels, and that's about it. But you don't have yeah. voting rights. You're just an right. honorary right. member. And then you start writing papers. When I joined, you could they would give you the best paper that was written, and they would give you a sample um, of some questions that you could write a paper on for each degree, starting with the first degree and working your way through 32. It takes almost four years to complete it. And it's a long process. But what's cool is as you write each paper, you graduate, so to speak. So when you finish the Lodge of Perfection, they make you an honorary, venerable past, a past venerable master of the Lodge of Perfection in Guthrie. You get a little jewel to wear, minor shadow box somewhere, and then you move to the next. And when you finish them all, they make you an adept of the college. Okay. There's so much wisdom in there. One of the ones that got me is right before I... Right after I became an adept and I graduated the program, and it does take three and a half to four years, is I was doing a color study paper, and I've presented it in Kansas a few times. But I read this this young man's paper, this young brother's paper, and I went, wow, this is really good. And he says, as Pike says to Carr, and as Carr says versus Pike, and I went, who's this Carr guy? So I read his paper, and I'm, I look in the back, and it's me. He's referencing one of my papers, so I call Bob. Bob, how did he get my paper? Well, we like your paper on this, and we sent it out. There have been several better ones than that since sure. then, but it was an early one. But it's something that hit them. But this guy actually compared me to Pike, so when I sent out my email that says I approved it, and that I thought he should move forward, I was like, dude, he compared me to Pike. I'm going to vote for this kid. He could have wrote three words and compared me to Pike. Hopefully it was Pike <laughs> during... Can, can, can we say this? Pike was a genius in a True. lot of... But can we agree on this? There's a sometimes there's a small difference between a genius and insanity in some. Mm -hmm. So I think as much of a genius as Pike was, he was a little out there in some areas for me. Especially and, his time period. But you realize this is the yes. man who could write 38 words in a sentence and use no commas in one period. Right. You yeah. ever really read Morals, Morals and Dogma? No. Dog. I've read it three times. It, yeah. well, and good it's for amazing. You. I it's can't amazing. get into I'm just like, what is going on? But you, but I have not been in the appropriate altered state to get through. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough old fashioned. The thing uh, about Pike, though, is when you read Pike, you've got to realize you may read a sentence and you may have to Google up. 10 words out of 30 in that sentence because he'll say okay. as Hippolyta to, to Minerva and, and you're going okay Hippolyta why was she important to Minerva how did they come together yeah. and you've got to kind of figure out what he meant there do they follow the degrees I still don't think so Yeah. but I think each one different than the York Rite the Scottish Rite is a series of morality plays mm -hmm. right 29 of them mm -hmm. yep and actually, three blue lot, three red lodge degrees that we don't see conferred that they only confer in in Louisiana. That's fascinating because um, red degrees came up not too long ago in a discussion. In a discussion, yes, they're yeah. French. Yeah, yeah. Scottish rights, French, right? Yeah. yeah. The American right is pretty much American. We yeah. do have some some. The York right does have some British association. Um, what's interesting about the York right is. All of the honorary bodies, almost in the York right. In Scottish right, we have one honor, with two honors, right? You got a Knight Commander of the Court of Honor, and you have your thirty-third. Those are your two honors. In the York right, there are several. There are the Past Commanders Association for someone who served as a commander of his commandery. There's the Order of the Silver Trow if you served in, in charge of your council as illustrious master. There is the Order of the High Priesthood. Our order of anointed kings, we call it something different, for those who served as, as high priest of their chapter. And then there's something called the Knight York Cross of Honor. 
that's pretty prestigious. You can apply. The other three you can apply to be in. This one you have to be invited. It means you presided with dignity and honor over your chapter, your council, your commandery, and your blue lodge. Okay. It's for past masters of all four bodies. Okay. There's several others. There's the the or the um, the Council of Knight Masons USA. They teach what's called the Green Degrees. Um, you have to be a member of the chapter to receive those. Okay. There's the Allied Masonic Degrees, which as a, as a chapter mason, you have to be a member of the chapter, but it holds all the old degrees, the Royal Ark Mariner, the Ark and the Dove, um, the Knights of Constantinople. All of the old and side degrees are held by the, the AMD, the Allied Masonic Degrees. Okay. There's so many of these. The order of uh, Masonic Order of Athelstan in the USA, which we don't have yet in Kansas. But there's so many, but they're all off of the chapter. Almost everything comes off of being a chapter mason. Okay. And they're honorary where you can't ask to join. But oh, come on. We know who would like to be a member. Sure. And we know who would add to our numbers. Um, the AMD is, a, is an education body. You have the Red Cross of Constantine, which is a Christian mm -hmm. order. You have so many different bodies that come off of the York Rite. The one that everybody thinks comes off of the York Rite that doesn't is the Masonic Rosicrucians. You just have to be a master mason, but everybody thinks you have to be a member of the chapter or the commandery to be a member of the Rosicrucians. Yeah. And that's a research body. All of these bodies bring their own they version of light. They yeah. have a purpose. The green degrees are the Irish degrees. When's the last time you heard somebody talk about conferring the old Irish degrees? You know? I mean, I, I do that usually. Uh, at Russ and I get together, and it's uh, usually over Jameson on, on the rocks. Well, something. Jameson. Yeah, so we call that our old Irish degree. You know, maybe a little Bailey's you know, in the morning if you're up early enough. You know, I mean, we, we, uh, we've tried we to don't get up that early. With that, that so, is fair. But the York Ride is beautiful <laughs> um, because it is the completion of our Blue Lodge experience. And there's so many opportunities. Um, Missouri is doing a, did a deal that they found very successful where... They would, you would understand this, they would invite any Master Mason in the state in, and they would receive the Mark Master degree up to the obligation. Okay. And then they would receive the Past Master degree. And then they would be told, if you'd really like to join, we're going to be doing a day where we can do all these. Missouri has found that to be very successful. Yeah. I, I was going to ask. To tease. So I, yeah. I, starting my 27th year as a Freemason, 26th year, Scottish Rite Shrine, so, two sentences or less, how do we get Master Masons to become? It all starts with us. Where, where, would, they go, where would, would they go, though? Where would they go? So, do? I'm a Master Mason, so do I go to a website, which will have a cross? Yeah. Do, where does Grand, Russ Brown become a York Rite You can Mason? go to Kansas York Rite or Google up Grand, Grand York Rite of Kansas. GrandYorkRiteOfKansas.com or just Google just that? Google that and okay. Google and it'll pop up. Um, okay. It's I think it's KansasYorkRite.org was what will come okay. up. Okay. Um, there's some good resources there. There's a petition there. There's a list of all the chapters, councils, commanders in the state. There's also a new publication. We produce three public. I, I'm the publications editor for the York Rite, for the Grand York Rite. We produce three publications and uh, every every quarter. One of those is. A, an insert for the Royal Arch Mason magazine that covers the chapter in the council. There's some education there. There's some, hey, this is what we've done or this is what's coming up, like degree work or things of that nature. The Grand Commandery, we produce, the, the Grand Encampment of Knights Tipper of the United States produces a nice glossy magazine. They used to do an insert in it. but well, now we do the insert online. And we publish that every month. And it's something, it's basically one page front and back, eight and a half by 11. And it talks about what's happening in Knight Templary, in our jurisdiction. Now, we've done something new. We produced a brand new publication called Letters from York. Uh, we just put out our third our third copy um, in its first year. We produce it every three months, once a quarter, and it's basically York Rite Masonry for you because you're not a member. Right. We email it out. It's available for download for any Master Mason. And it's kind of a, a tool to educate our own members as to what's happening in York Rite and the AMD, the Knight Masons, the chapters, the councils, what's happening in our locals. But also for you to see what's happening and to get you interested in the York Rite. And on the back it says, if you're interested in York Rite Masonry, here's how you reach out. Talk to a York Rite brother. But we should be asking him to join. He's a good brother. He has an interest in history. He has an interest in understanding what he didn't complete in his Blue Lodge York 
experience. We all know that the Blue Lodge is at York Wright Lodge in Kansas, right? You understand that? Mm -hmm. Most people don't. They think the York Wright is different. Um, it is a part of Blue Lodge Masonry because it it's is... Extension. It's an extension. Because... Oh! You guys see that? We are now off the air. That missed me by this much. <laughs> Gentlemen, we should drink to that. <laughs> we should decide. So, Patrick, thank you for coming on and talking about the, 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 the York Rite. That's just uh, something that, one, we don't know a lot about, but uh, we, we think it should get a little bit of a pub. So uh, appreciate it. Thanks, uh, thanks for listening. Thank you, Brother Russ. Thank you. Thanks, Brother